Okay, Charles LeBlanc here. And we all know about the battle with me and the cops, and the cops raided my place on January 19, 2012. Bernard Richard made a uh, investigation. It wasn't done properly. The cops lied to Bernard Richard. Anyway, so I decided to handwritten a letter this thing here and handwritten a letter to the Minister of Justice Marie-Claude Blais. Okay, I'm going to read it. This is the first time I wrote the letter in, in the pen and paper in 20 years. I decided to write you a letter to explain what I have been going through since that awful day the Fredericton police raided my little place on January 19, 2012. I will admit that it was a very emotional period in my life, especially when a group of stranger, strangers invade your little private space. I don't live in a big house, but I like it. I am writing, I am, I am certain these strangers search all through my place looking for something illegal. <clears throat> I was very puzzled when they threw me in the jail cell and very confused once I got home after being released. I just couldn't believe that the police force would take all my computer stuff. Items such as my hard drive, monitor, speakers, keyboard, all my external hard drives, over 200,000 pictures, all the notes <clears throat> on my wall, an old computer in my bedroom, and my modem were gone. They took everything, Marie-Claude. I'm on social assistant, not proud of it, not proud of this, but that's the way it is. So I couldn't afford to buy a computer to replace the items <clears throat> they have taken. Even if I had a new computer, I wouldn't have been able to go on the information highway because they also had taken my modem. Why would they do this? They wanted to shut me down permanently and they did just that. There was, there was one good thing <clears throat> that came out of this awful situation. I quickly found out that I do have many supporters out there. Many supporters immediately stepped forward with computer parts and money. They wanted me to return to blogging as soon as possible. The amount of support was huge and I'll admit that I was surprised. I met many new friends and I also found out who my true friends were. Three days earlier, three days before my raid, I was in court on the charge of causing a disturbance in front of the police station with a blowhorn. My friends were in court along with the police wondering what I was going to do, plead guilty or not guilty. My friends told me to plead guilty and move on to other issues with my life. I wasn't comfortable in doing this, especially after a female police officer came to me in court and told me everything will be okay, Charles. I was wondering why, why an officer would be interrupting a court proceeding. I pleaded guilty and the same officer who inter interrupted me in court led a team of eight to ten cops to my place three days later. Was the, uh, was the police officer doing the dirty business in, in the courtroom? It's a darn shame that I had no right to a lawyer, which meant that I was all alone and I had to represent myself. I found it very strange that the same judge who was proceeding over my trial was the same one who signed the search warrant. 
I was ready to turn the page and mo move on with my life. But the raid of my place completely took me off guard. What really bothered me is the same friends who were in court to support me three days earlier were suddenly nowhere to be found. They, couldn't they wouldn't tell the media that this wasn't right. They quickly distanced distance themselves from me. The question was why? I strongly believe they thought if the police raided his place, Charles must be into child porn. My story was in the public eye, eye for months, months and months. I would have believed that the day I would, I would have never, never believed the day would come that Charles would say enough of the media attention. Everyone wanted a piece of Charles. I didn't mind, but it was getting on my nerves. I escaped the city and went to a retreat in Rogersville for a six days of solitude. Excuse me. In May, I found out that the charges of, of, of defamation against me were dropped. The charges were denied at the provincial level. In my opinion, it should have been dismissed at the local level. I felt good but I was once again arrested by the Fredericton Police Force near the New Brunswick Legislature. I might add that I was assaulted. The RCMP investigated and suggested to the prosecutor that, I'll, that I be charged with assault. Once again, the Justice Department at the provincial level denied their request. I don't want to mix up the part, the, the pages. I would love to know why does members of the Fredericton Police Force always follow Dan Bissiard orders. Then I learned that the Chief of Police, Barry Midnight, suddenly retired. He told the media that it had nothing to do with my case. The city announced that Bernard Burchard would be in charge of investigating this matter between me and the cops. At first, I didn't agree that Bernard Burchard should be the one to investigate this, cause uh, this this uh, this this case. So this, this this case. Why is a mistake when I'm reading? to investigate this case because I have known Bernard for over 20 years. I didn't bother talking to Bernard during, during his investigation because the city refused to set money aside to pay for my lawyer. The reason I wanted a lawyer is I'm not intelligent enough to chat with Bernard about my charter of rights. Once the report came out, I was surprised to learn that the cop, Fred Wazel, never spoke to Bernard. He was the police officer who made the complaint that led to the police to raid my place in the first place. Uh, it was just like the Warrant Commission who investigated the assassination of John F. Kennedy. The two main characters weren't there. I was upset that Bernard Richard labeled me as an, as an a emotionally disturbed individual. I confronted Bernard after the news conference about his finding. He showed me a blog, that, a blog I wrote that I called Fred Wazo a sexual predator and kids were in danger around him. This was a huge lie given by the Fredericton Police Force. I am not putting the blame on Bernard Richard. If I would have talked to the former Ombudsman, I would have, I would have straightened him out. But what is done is done. 
the report came out and my place caught on fire 72 hours later. I had a very rough week. But not all wasn't lost with the report because it showed how dirty the police were. The police falsely fals 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 fill out a form telling or tricking my internet provider that I was into child porn. This was a very dirty trick to pull, to, to pull, Marie Claude. Very dirty. I believe someone from the Fredericton Police Force said, Charles, Charles lives alone and he has no kids. He must be into child porn. I have over 200,000 pictures in my external hard drive and I assume they went through every single picture. If they would have found one child porn picture, my hobby as a blogger would have been officially uh, over. Would have been over forever. Maybe that wouldn't be a bad thing. Lots of laugh. Now, if the police lied to the internet provider, are they also lying in court? The point that really bothers me is this. If this happened to me, what other person has this happened to that would never will that would or will never see the light of day in the media former police chief Barry Midnight told the CCLA that there were 12 other people who were charged under section 301 of the criminal code of Canada one case is still pending, I guess. The reason I decided to write you this handwritten letter is that I am very concerned of the manner the less fortunate are being treated by the police and the justice system. The police have stepped over the line and nobody has paid the price for this awful situation. There are way too many unanswered questions Body code. Number one, why and who lied to the internet provider? Number two, who made the phony form to trick the internet provider in believing that I was into child porn? Three, while I was in jail six hours, did the cop search for child porn over my place? Four, why take all my computer items, including my modem? Five, why were the cops in the courtroom three days earlier before my raid? Are the cops allowed to do the dirty, de dirty deeds in the court of law? Six, why did the police hunt me down on a Saturday night to give me a ticket to ride a bicycle on the sidewalk nine days earlier? Orders from Dan Bichier. Seven. Bernard Richard never chatted with the local prosecutor on this issue. I chatted with the pro he he chatted. Oh, not that one. Excuse me, I'm mistake here. He chatted with the prosecutor at the provincial level. The local prosecutor are as much to blame than the cops. Eight, judges are not treating people with mental problems with respect. I walk into a courtroom and was shuttered by a judge 20 seconds into, into the hearing. Nine, why are the police all, always following orders given by Dan Bissier? 10. Why are the police following a double standard policy against the less fortunate? I receive a ticket uh, from a third party complaint. While I, while I showed the police video and pictures of politicians jaywalking, but nothing was done. Why this double standard policy? 
These are only some issues from the top of my head, Marie Claude. I know that I haven't been the same Charles of Blanc since that awful day. The cops raided my place and probably will never be the same again. I'm asking you, can you please order a proper inquiry so we can get to the bottom of this issue so this never happens to anyone else in the future. I am enclosing a copy of the report for you and you can see the details by clicking on top of my blog. Merci beaucoup, Charles. So, I will deliver this. What's the date today? On Friday, February 22nd. Uh, and we'll see what's going to happen. And something tells me nothing will happen. But I'll just uh, continue the battle. Okay, that's it.